Hello, it's Saturday the 8th of February and it is a good 40, 41 degrees outside. I'm not doing any soldering today but to keep myself occupied underneath the air conditioner I decided to pull out the Lovell Straight 50 amplifier and check some voltages inside just to document them and to keep me occupied for a while. Now what you're seeing over here is the amplifier chassis. As you see everything is upside down. I'm going to give you a bit of a history on this amplifier as I wiggle the camera around giving you the impression that I'm drunk, which I'm not. Um, this started off as a basement, tweed basement variant um, and I had a small hand in assisting in building it and his design, at least some tips. Um, for you see Tim Lovell who now lives in South America um, he's a good friend of mine and I lived around the corner from his workshop in North Melbourne a few years ago I moved in there say about 2004 or so and um, he was building guitars I was a pedal nerd and we were, both of us together were learning about amplifiers and experimenting spending many many late nights drinking Cooper's sparkling ale and playing with high voltages now this is his first amp that he ever built um, he did a lot of prototyping, a lot of testing with that. Uh, since it's been in my possession, it's gone through a few changes, but I'll show you a few things. Um, it uses a, a Weber Tweed Basement Power Transformer. The output transformer is a Hammond, also a Tweed Basement style, and the choke is a Tweed Basement style um, Hammond choke. One thing that is different from the Tweed Baseman, as opposed to using 6L6s, he uses KT66s, which is closer to what a Marshall JTM45, well, actually it is what a Marshall JTM45 uses, and the early Plexis, plexis as well. Um, got a tube rectifier and a little switch over there for either using the valve or the solid state rectifier. I always keep it on the valve rectifier. Now, what you see over here is the impedance switch. Um, you may see a bit of writing on there in blue. Now the Tweed Basement used a, um, the output transformer primary was 4.2K and the JTM45 output transformer primary was anything between about 8 and 9K. Sort of varied depending upon what Jim Marshall bought at the time. So I'm using the same basement transformer but as opposed to putting an 8 ohm load on the 8 ohm tap, I'm putting a 16 ohm load. See what I'm doing there? So therefore effectively doubling the impedance of the primary. Now I'm going to show you something for all you people that tend to spend a lot of time on forums talking about capacitors and resistors and whatnot and what gets the tone. One thing that's very interesting about this amplifier is that my mate Tim used little half watt metal film resistors, you know some of them are a bit bendy because obviously he was doing a lot of experimenting pulling out parts and putting it back in but you know they're metal film resistors not carbon comp as a lot of people like to use and does that mean that this is a bad sounding amp? No it doesn't, it really really doesn't, it's a really good sounding amp. Now since it's been in my possession I've done a few modifications um, there was a few little experiments he did. He actually had separate bias pots for each output um, valve. I put the one because obviously you know you can buy matched sets of output valves so having separate bias pots is a bit superfluous in my point of view and also I don't want to be adjusting two of them every time I change valve um, output tubes. Only one. I only want to change one. I'm lazy. Also, you may see there's two little resistors for the phase splitter. Originally, Tim had a little trim pot so we can have them balanced right to his particular tastes. Um, we've learnt a lot since then. Um, maybe something useful for hi-fi for a guitar amplifier, not necessarily so. So I changed those as well. Like I said, personal taste, each to their own. And um, I've changed a whole bunch of values to make it closer to a plexi. So it's pretty much using basement parts, so somewhere halfway between a Plexi and a JTM45. And in my personal point of view, 
Sounds good. Now what I'm going to do, oh yeah, before I forget, <laughs> that little switch over there um, is for the cathode bypass capacitor of the second stage. Like, um, yeah, basically there's a, a, a voltage amplifier followed by a, um, let me start it again. There's an amplifier that increases gain, which uses one triode in the 12AX7 pair, and that's followed by a cathode follower. Now, in the JTM45, there was no bypass capacitor on the cathode, but in the plexis from 1969 onwards, there was 680 nanofarad. Now, what I've done over here, I keep the 680 nanofarad hardwired into it, but I um, also have the option of putting in a larger capacitor, I think it's a 22 microfarad, to give it a bit more bottom end, a bit more oomph. Some may say a bit more mud, but it is all, you know, really open to what one likes. And I like these things, so I modified it as well. I've got electronic skills, so, you know, I forever tinker. But anyway, that's it open. I'm going to put it back in its cabinet and show you some other nifty things about it. One final thing before I do put it away, because as these videos usually have these little afterthoughts as I forget, tend to forget things because I'm just going off the cuff. As you can see on this chassis, there's got two wooden bars. I really like the use of wood. It's actually rather ingenious because um, the chassis itself is just like a folded sort of thing. So Tim improvised. As I said, he was a guitar maker, so he had a lot of wood lying around. These two wooden bars, little holes there, which screw to the bottom of the chassis, rather than using something like rack bolts or whatnot. And I quite like that. Uh, I may actually do that with one of my amp builds because I know I've got a lot of wood lying around, and I suck with sheet metal. Uh, I really do. I can drill holes. That's about the extent of it. But anyway, as I said and as I promised, I'm going to put it in the case. Now here it is in this lovely head cabinet. It's a very nice front panel, I must admit. He, um, there's no actual front panel that actually sits on the chassis, as you probably noticed. He actually painted the front, sanded it back, painted it again, sanded it, painted it again, until it got to this really nice pearly white sort of finish. Um, the actual writing, Tim, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, the decals, if I remember correctly, we are talking about 2005 here, and it's now 2014, so my memory's a bit shady. It's called the straight 50, it's probably close to about 40, 45 watts, but really, who's counting? Um, really nicely told, it's got a really nice grill cloth with some flathead screws. It's all flathead screws all around, so you can use a nice old-fashioned screwdriver, apart from the corners, which is Phillips heads, but who's gonna take off corners, really? A couple of nice little features. Uh, these little grates here for, for ventilation, assuming they're called grates, forgive me if I've given the wrong terminology. He actually machined these himself out of metal. Um, he's a very talented individual. He's um, got a few more skills than I do. And this is the back over here. As I've shown you the rectifier switch to speaker outputs, the impedance switch, that was a foot switch for the little fat switch at the front or should I say the deep switch this little fella here I sort of modify that deep adds the 22 microfarad capacitor in parallel with the 680 nanofarad to give it a bit more oomph overall it's a very nice sounding amp now I'm going to go out and set this thing up in the bungalow which is a rather stupid thing to be doing on a 40 degree day because I'm sure the bungalow is a wee bit hot I'll be strapping myself up with a Les Paul and turning on this thing which sort of doubles as a heater thanks to the valve filaments. But these are the things you got to do because I promised my mate Scott as well as Tim. Scott is a previous owner of this amp. Um, he wanted to hear what I actually did to modify and what it sounds like now. So you went from Fender Clean to um, a really growly sort of vintage Marshall sound. And I may even stick it through a sun face. Um, I'll be popping it through a speaker cabinet with two 70s Celestian Greenbacks to give you an idea how it sounds. I'll tell you one thing, it's going to be fun even though I'm going to be sweating like an absolute prick. So here we go. So here we are kitties out in the bungalow, it's sweltering outside and I'm really starting to work up some serious perspiration. 
Now um, it's um, sitting there on top of its matching 2x12 also made by Tim Lovell. Previously had Celestian Vintage 30s but now as I mentioned previously it has 70s greenbacks. I am using the obligatory Gibson Les Paul Deluxe 1975 red sparkle top. Oh, look at that sparkle glittering away. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Fitted with Gibson P90s as opposed to the stock mini humbuckers which were microphonic. Strung with um, Gibson pure nickel wound 11 to 50s. And also for laughs, I am going through the Sunface NKT275 fuzz box, which uses a pair of red dot new old stock NKT275 PNP germanium transistors. Jesus, that was a mouthful. But anyway, another thing to take note of. Look at that lovely, if the son of a expletive would focus. Not sure how well that comes up on the camera. That is a purple jewel lamp. I love purple. That may have possibly been my personal suggestion to Tim. Probably comes up as white on this thing. Ah, so I'm going to shut up and play this thing. Because that's, after all, what you're probably watching this video for. You want to hear this amp. So, I'm going to shut up and play my guitar. This is straight through the amp, no pedals as yet. chunk to it. Now mind you, um, I've got the two channels jumpered here with my little mint thingy. Um, both volumes, both the bright and the normal are turned up to about three. You know, it's got... <laughs> it's got a fair amount of chunk to it. I quite like that, so... Uh, let's go to the next pickup. to it. Well, late 60s Clapton, back when he was better, so you know, both pickups sort of got that sort of... Um bit of wool to it, which you'd sort of expect from like a 60s sort of Marshall. Um, but what I really like is when I chuck on the fuzz box. Like I said, it's, it doesn't have any real mojo parts in there apart from the orange drop capacitors. It's just got little metal film resistors bought from J-Car, which is somewhat the Australian equivalent of Radio Shack, although I don't think Radio Shack in the US sell components anymore. J-Car only just. But, you know, it's good. <laughs> Go 
got to throw some prog in there. But anyway, um, Scott, Tim, hope you're happy. Um, especially you, Tim, considering this was your amp that um, design that I decided to butcher and modify. Um, there you go. Feel free to leave comments below, any questions, yada yada yada, or even abuse. I'm always up for some abuse. So, yep. <laughs>